And you can watch the telly and just feel love for them, but not feel this terrible sense of grief, which is related to your own life, not to theirs. Because when I said to her, you know, stop watching it, and uh, and she just looked at me and said, "Oh, you horrible, unfeeling person." But now I understand. Yes, I should have. Um, I could have. Um, encouraged her to get into those feelings. Yeah, really encourage people to get into their feelings. That's the law of attraction operating in their life. Let them feel those feelings. So I feel really passionate about what's happened with the fires, but I know that it was created by soul condition. And in fact, the majority of the deaths were created by soul condition too. Because many of them had the soul condition that they were willing to put their property ahead of their life, right? Which creates in itself an attraction. So I know the true causes of what's going on with it. The key is for you to allow any single person who's triggered by these emotions, get them into the emotion. Let them go go into the emotion. Don't avoid the emotion. Don't step away from the emotion. And wouldn't you say once we're perfected in this lesson, we won't have judgment, but we will still care about how other people feel. Right. Yeah. So we can look upon many things and feel love for all the parties involved. Yeah. But we may actually be partial to certain parties if we feel that they are treating another unlovingly. We may like, we won't become all zen about it and just go, oh well it's you know yeah. that's the way of the world. The, the truth is that you get to a point where where you can feel love for the person who's abusing the other person, but not agree with the actions of the person who's abusing the other person. And in fact do everything in your power to prevent those actions that is loving. Does that make sense? but still not condemn the person. And the problem today is we all often want to condemn the person. We want to punish the person. And in reality, the abuser needs just as much help, if not more, than the abused person. When I say help, I mean help to become love. The abused person is probably already in a loving space or with some more attraction issues, but the abuser is in a much less loving place and needs more help. So from God's perspective, an abuser would actually receive more help because he needs more help if he wants it. And that's the key thing, if he wants it. Right? Most often they don't, right? So of course they're not going to get it if they don't want it. So the key is to look at every situation. In the end, you'll be able to look at a person who's murdered and feel a feeling in your heart of compassion for them, but not agree with the action. Right? But want to help them as well. I want to... Any of you seen that? Is it Dead Man? Dead Man Walking. Dead Man Walking. Okay. <laughs> it's worth seeing. It's about that issue. And uh, it's, it's got a bit of a wicked ending. But it's, uh, uh, when I say wicked ending, it's not a judgment. I, just, I think it's a great ending. But um, it, it's, it's just so good a way of presenting what we will become in the end in terms of inside of us emotionally. I'm a little unclear about this boycott thing because in in my life, if I if I don't if I don't agree with some uh, uh, something that's going on, and I have the ability to vote with my dollar, mm -hmm. then I will I will vote use my dollar, my time, my energy to vote with something that I feel is loving rather yeah. than something that I feel is not like Yeah, maybe I should clarify. When, I, when I'm talking about boycotting, I'm talking about active projection of anger towards a particular issue. Okay. Now, most of us are not honest with ourselves with this. Like, it's one thing to actually step away from choosing to do something, quite another to have an active projection of anger towards that and boycott it for that reason. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. yeah. It's the active projection of anger which actually creates more disharmony. Can I clarify about my boycotting issue? Because I, that, I said the same thing to AJ. I, I've got Rosemary from two different places. I'm choosing the other place. Mm -hmm. And he pointed out that actually it's because of my emotion. That's the damaging thing. I'm actively angry about you know, an issue. Yeah. So I was trying to get Mary back to the emotion of it. The emotion is that she is angry. And the anger is what actually creates more unloving situations, not less. So she's thinking she's doing an uh, actively loving thing by boycotting. In reality, her anger is the thing that's contributing to more unloving things. 
and in reality, I do go with my daughter a lot still. Like I, I feel I'm discerning about what I buy, the source of the things that I buy. But you won't be angry about it. Yeah. The clear inside, yeah. So we're not talking about all of these things. I'm talking about the emotion that's in you, what you're feeling towards it, not necessarily the action. It's the emotion inside of you. So if you're boycotting because the emotion inside of you, I'm angry with that party and you know, I support this party, then you're out of harmony with love. But if the emotion in you is, oh, there's an unloving thing that I've seen there and I want to do what I can to not support that unloving thing, that's a totally different thing. But if you now go out campaigning, campaigning for that, you've got to then question, why am I campaigning for that, when really one of the better things I could be campaigning for is for people to change at the soul level. So why am I focused on the issue? Remember last week, a few weeks ago, the issue for you was this issue of vaccination. Mm -hmm. right. Now, it was the emotion in you of fear about a vaccination that drove your desire to find out about vaccination, that drove your desire then to tell everybody about vaccination, and to, you know, and even not to sleep at night. Right? That was the emotion, right? Now, that, the natural love way of handling it is that, of handling this to care about how others feel about others, is handling it like that. But that doesn't help you any, and it doesn't help them either. The, the divine love way, right, I feel about the vaccination issue. Oh, it goes back to my childhood when mum actually injected me with vaccinations. And I felt this pain about being treated badly through my mother and so forth and being told that it was right. And, and that's what drove all of that other behaviour. Now, do you think if that had happened to you, if that hadn't happened to you, that you would have taken the same course with vaccination? I don't think so. And that's what I'm talking about. The core emotion, what's driving the decisions. Does that make sense? So I disagree with vaccination as much as you do, uh, in the sense that I don't agree that it's a loving practice. I also feel that it's quite a dangerous practice because there are often many chemicals in the vaccination, even like mercury and things like that, that are very damaging to the human body. But I don't have the same anger and panic and fear and all of those things which are actually creating the problem even further. Mm -hmm. If that makes sense Obviously. through the law of attraction. Right. Yeah. Right, I'll proceed because uh, you need to. Second one. Right. I care about how others treat themselves. So what are we talking about there? Mm. Um, uh, no. No. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean by how others treat themselves? So let's say um, you see this happening a lot, right? Where what's a drug dealer doing? He's using other people's addictions which is other people's avoidance of their own emotions in order to make a personal profit, isn't it? So does he care about how other people treat themselves? No. no. If he cared about other people treating themselves, he could never sell the drug. Do you follow me? Now let's take it a bit further. A person who's a tobacconist. Now that's a legal drug, yeah? But from God's perspective, it's the same decision, isn't it, in the end? Does it harm the body or help the body? Plenty of evidence that it harms it, right? We've had plenty of evidence. It's obviously quite harming to the spiritual system of the body as well. Now, through the emotional problems. Now, what's, what are they doing? They are making a profit out of harming another person. Is that love? What about uh, selling alcohol? Can you see how this starts to get quite fine? Like, what about butchering? Okay. Let's look at it from an emotional point of view. So I care about how others treat themselves I'm from an emotional point of view. Would I then make a choice in my own decisions, make a choice where I know the person doesn't want to do something and I try to get them to do it? So let's say my partner is a one for some of the men. Your partner does not want to have sex with you tonight. No. And I badger her and use her guilt because she hasn't had sex with me for the last two weeks. 
to actually get her to do it tonight. Is that a loving act? No. Because if I loved her, I would care about how she's treating herself. Can you see that? What about if I had a servant? Right? Let's say there's plenty of people in countries that have servants still. If I got my servant to do something that I wouldn't do for myself, am I being loving? Am I being loving, allowing them to treat themselves worse than I would treat them? Than I would treat myself, sorry. No, the answer is no. Can you see how much behaviour would stop just with this one thing? It's a, it's a huge issue, isn't it? But again, let's go into it emotionally. What inside of me, emotionally, would expect my servant to clean my toilet when I wouldn't do it? And I expect my servant to do it because I'm paying him. What emotion within me would cause me to want my servant to prostitute themselves for the sake of money, for my behalf? Because that's really what they're doing in the end. What emotion in me would do that? You can see how there might be some pretty dark emotions in there, right? It's quite a serious matter. So there might be a dark emotion in me of like, I deserve it because I'm paying him. Well, how many times do you hear of people that haven't even cooked for, like this happens a lot overseas that I've been, where people haven't cooked for themselves ever in their life. How many of you husbands, and this is a question for you to ask yourselves, how many of you have actually cooked meals for your wives as much as your wife has cooked a meal for you? <laughs> a few of you. What emotion within you thinks you can get away with that? without there being some kind of anger or something else being generated in the partner. What emotion in you causes you to believe that? Why do you think you can help her treat herself badly? Can you see what I'm saying? You see, there's so many issues in life we could face, you could just talk about this one. Can you give the example of business dealings? Oh yeah, this happens a lot, right? Business dealings. Let's say, let's bring up two examples with business dealings. Let's say I go along to buy a car and I know that person really badly needs to sell this car. And they might be offering the car for $3,000 and I know they badly need the money. And I know that they'll take a thousand. If they were so hard up, they'd take a thousand. And I know that I can feel that from them, that they are so much afraid that they've got no money. And so what do I do? I offer them a thousand. Now I've got enough money, I might have three thousand to pay for it, I might have enough money. And in fact I may even believe it's worth three thousand. And if I believe it's worth three thousand and I offer a thousand, what am I doing? I'm actually like helping them treat themselves badly. That's what I'm doing. Right. Now it's a different thing if it's not worth three it's only worth 2000 or 1000 then offer that. But if you're doing it, and the motive you're doing it is because you know you can take advantage of the person, then it's out of harmony with love. And this thing causes them to deal with, like, the world's affairs, you know, nobody um, ever looked after me. No one ever looked after me, I'm going to get my own when I can. What other causal emotions might be there, do you think? Oh, in that transaction? Greed. Greed, a feeling like, Oh, I haven't got enough myself if I can save money. I know one man who was just addicted to a bargain. The reason why he's addicted to a bargain is because he feels good about himself when he's drummed the other person down to the most smallest amount of money that they can pay. What is that? That is a desire to oppress another so that you can feel good about yourself. That's what it is. Yeah. How about if you're selling your house and it's worth, you think it's worth 250000 the person comes along and offers you 200000 is it, is it, which is a loving way then? Is it loving for you to love them by giving it to them for 200000 or love yourself by saying, no, I'm 250000 <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Gary, this is a loaded question. <laughs> Let's look at the issue from the point of view of love. Though. Firstly, what is a house worth, really? 
what someone will pay for it. Do you get that? Why does anybody on earth have to pay for anything? Because we've created this stupid system where we've got to pay for some house over our head. When in reality, we should all be able to just say, yeah, I need a house over my head and somebody comes and makes it for us. Isn't that right? Yes. And I should be able to say, I need some clothes. And somebody makes some clothes. If it's not me, and if and somebody else should be able to say, oh, I need a, you know, whatever it is that they need, and I go and do that for them without expecting anything back. That's the ideal system, isn't it? Right. So anything outside of the ideal system, in the end, is just error upon error upon error. So my believing that something is worth a certain amount of money is all a fictitious thing in the first place. Now, the question is, are you being loving? Well, what's your feelings inside of you? When this man comes up and offers you 200000 and you get upset, oh, it's worth more than 200000 it's worth 250000 I'm never going to speak to this man again, or don't want to see him again, and how dare he offer me that? That's just putting... What, what's going on now? It's a law of attraction event to trigger my emotions. If I'm in love, I'll do that. And I won't worry about the 200000 offer or the 250000 offer or any of those things. I will focus on the emotion. So let's focus on the emotion in the transaction. If you're in a state where you've cleared away your emotions, what will happen is whatever you desire. So if you wanted 250000 from the property, it'll be because you have some other pure emotions about what you're going to do about that 250000 what you're going to do with it helping others, and all these other things that will all be in harmony with God's love. And because you have that emotion, we get exactly what you want. So the whole discussion of should I take it, should I leave it, is really a new point in the So then, uh, I'm going to return the would be making me feel very unworthy. Okay, so go with the unworthy emotion. You don't have to accept the offer, just go with the unworthy emotion. Right? Go with that, feel that, process that. It's got nothing to do with the other side at all, will it? Not really. Remember, I said to you two weeks ago, right, about the law of attraction? Nothing's got anything to do with another person. It's all got to do with your own soul condition growing towards God and all the law of attraction happening is everything to do with what you were drawing into your life. So if you, like at the moment I have, a, I have a, one property left in South Australia that I haven't been able to sell for nearly four years. I've had it on the market for that amount of time. And uh, I had a contract on it just recently but it all just fell through. And so I still haven't got it. I've got this debt of around 1500 a month going out that I'm not earning any income for the pay. And I really would like it probably be sold because if I get that debt out of the way, I can live a lot less. But also I can use that money to do some printing and stuff that I want to do with my life stuff. So what's happening? What's happening is something inside of me is causing me to do with money and to do with this property and to do with it's causing this whole thing to happen and I need to look at it. Does that make sense? When I do it, the pretty issue will be resolved. Either way, it will be resolved. Hey Jay, coming through this whole process, I'm sort of more easily recognising what others do to themselves as well. Yeah. But where my dilemma is at the moment, and what I'm trying to sort out is whether I help them or not. And I've found that at the moment where I am, is I've decided that if they ask for my help, then I will give it to them. But it's whether I offer my help no, or not. Yeah. Um, if a person doesn't desire something from you, then, and that desire is not a pure desire, because remember, a lot of people can desire things from you and it'd be a totally impure desire, right? right? If you're a good looking woman walking down the street, you're going to have five men rejecting you sexually, wanting to have sex with you, right? Are they pure desires? Would you follow them up? So, so obviously it depends on their desire and whether it's pure or not. So ask yourself, like, ask yourself, is the desire harmonious with love in the person? If it is, help them. So I suppose what I'm struggling with is someone will, like, I'll notice someone doing something. There was a girl at work the other day that was stifling, went and bought a chocolate bar and was... And straight away I've just gone, oh, I was off emotion, got the chocolate. And I said that to her, and afterwards I thought, no, nah, I shouldn't have done that. Yeah. Because I just, you know, because I can see it, I just want to say, hey, all you've got to do is 
this, this, and this. And but, but you can say, do you want to know why you went for a chocolate bar just then? You can say that. concept of love is very much limited by our environment. What we want to do is take away that limitation by connecting to God. When you start connecting to God, then God's truth about love enters you. And as it does, you will learn some of these lessons. Some of these lessons of natural love will just come to you like that as a result of you learning it that way. So you have the ability to learn the lessons without 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 the environment being supportive of you. Part of the, one of the emotions you have is you want your environment to be supportive of you learning the lesson. And you feel really, really terrible about the fact that your environment was bad and you feel that was a big damaging thing to you. But the truth is actually, although it was damaging, I admit that it's damaging, the truth is you have the ability right now to learn these lessons even with that damage. Just by connecting to God. Just with that Justin's comment earlier about uh, what to do with uh, the love, I find that uh, give people the chance for truth. Yeah. Try to lay it on the heads. Offer them the truth. Love will offer a person truth. Yeah. So so love won't just say nothing. But love will offer them the choice. You speak loudly. Yeah. One about Tristan and Justin's statement. Yeah. That someone asked me a question about your conversation that I gave my answer and I gave the same. Sorry, you gave your answer? I gave my answer and I gave what was the same. And it got you the same. Yeah. 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 Yep. No. Well, I'm happy to be out there. I must say that. Yeah, that's yeah. in a situation where money just stopped. Yeah, which is what you needed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. You were there just for the money, and you really needed to live in harmony of truth, let yourself get sacked, and learn that you didn't need to be there for the money. Yeah. So there was a lot of attraction event there for you. Yeah. So it didn't get you in trouble. See, well, hey. I need the job and got me See how you're doing it. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
for them, even to some healthy eating too much junk food or whatever. If I care about how they treat themselves, then I offer them <coughs> the truth about it. But they have, I mean, just comes to mind because I think in a lot of marriages this, is, this doesn't work. Because if, if I care about how others treat themselves, I offer them the opportunity to know the truth. But if they refuse it, then I still respect their free will. So, so I don't pressure so you them. So they don't, yeah. She's allowed to eat the junk food and get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. That's her free will, isn't it? Yeah. She's allowed to do that. Right? But if you're nagging your partner, then you're, you're not, not respecting you're their not free will. You, you might say, I'm caring about you, but you're not actually. In fact, what you would do if you were loving, you would just say, this situation is not acceptable to me because you're not loving yourself and I can't stay in this relationship with you because you're not loving yourself, so I'm going to leave. <coughs> now, for many of you, that sounds unloving, doesn't it? But it's actually the most loving thing you could do in that situation. Because you will not help the person not love themselves. You will not help the person be unloving to themselves either, would you? So I wouldn't always say, oh, my wife really loves chocolate, but she's quite large now, and the doctor's chocolate is damaging her, but my wife really loves chocolate, so I'll go and get her some chocolate. Right? That would also be unloving, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. Carol? Is it not possible that that could be a, um, projection from the husband's <laughs> the, you know, I've been in a situation where I've been really projected on for a lot of years. Um, found myself getting up going to the gym one morning with my husband lying there. I hate going to the gym. Um, telling me to do this and to do that and I suddenly realised I'm going back to bed, you need to go to the gym. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it was before that I had a lot of projection um, about this sort of thing. Exactly. So, and projection's not loving. No, but what I'm saying is so him projecting you're, saying, you're saying, get up and go if you think they're hurting themselves, but um, could it not be that it's, that it's the husband's thing about oh. chocolate? <laughs> no, but see, what you're doing is you're looking at the whole situation just from his perspective again. Yeah. What you need to do is see, in that situation, both of you are being unloved. And you're not seeing your part in the creation. You're only seeing his part. The truth is, he is being unloving. Because he is projecting at you that you should do something, you know, and he's trying to force you into that, trying to suggest that to you all the time, criticizing you when it doesn't happen. All of those actions are unloving. If he's so concerned about it, he just needs to stop doing it. He needs to just say, oh, okay, this relationship's not working for me, I'll go find another relationship, that's right. That would be more loving than what he was doing. But you were being unloving too, because you were just getting up and going. You weren't loving yourself, right? And when you had the projection back in, he should be doing it, not you. That was also unloving. Do you see what I'm saying? Like, can you see, like, often what happens is we get into this to and fro with our partner, when in reality both of us are just being unloving and we both need to focus on our own emotion as to why we're doing that. Does that make sense? Yeah, you don't actually have to end the relationship either. You can really cause an emotion that causes you to project that your wife is actually Totally. You could stop projecting, look at the causal emotion, and ironically, when you do that, there's a very high likelihood your wife will have a higher self-esteem, therefore won't want to eat the things that she's now eating when she's with you because you're pulling her down all the time. And do you see what I'm saying? Like, often there's this whole loop of events that stop when even just one of you stops your action. But if you are so concerned about it and you want to keep projecting, that's not loving. You're far better off stepping back from the relationship even temporarily and looking at the emotions inside of you as to why you're willing to be so unloving than you are staying with the person, hammering them day after day after day after day and driving them nuts. Yeah, I just said that because, um, you know, from someone's perspective, listening to what you said, oh, well, you know, if you think she's going to kill herself eating chocolate, then get up and go. But, it, it, you know, isn't that simple? It sometimes is that you both have a little bit. You both don't got to do nothing. <laughs> the truth is you both have free will and one of you can choose to do one thing and one of you can choose to do another. The question that I was trying to resolve is that if my wife is unwilling to deal with the emotion that causes her to harm herself, then I've got to look very seriously at my own reasons of why I'm helping her do that. And if staying with her is helping her do it, I need to leave her 
even if it's temporarily, to let her work through that emotion. Like, like I can still love her, but not be with her until she deals with that emotion. Well, let's look at it in another situation. Seeing with eating is not an obvious one. Let's look at another one. My husband's walking down the street all the time and checking out the women as we're walking by. He's even holding my hand, right? Checking out the women as we're walking by, right? So we've got that issue. How many of you ladies have had that issue in a relationship? Right, quite a number, okay. Now, now, firstly, my law of attraction is I've got a husband who's looking at other women. What do you think that's telling me about myself? I don't feel I'm attractive. I don't feel I'm wanted. Like, so firstly, I need to start working through all those emotions. Secondly, if I was living in truth, I'd say to him, um, why are you doing that? <laughs> What's going on inside of you? Why do you want to do that? And he can say, oh, you know, just like, this is what men are like, right? Common answer. Men are like this. you just got to get this one. Now, if he has that dismissive attitude with me and doesn't want to deal with his emotions, I have then got a question, all right, what am I going to do? Now, I can stay in the relationship with this man and spend the next 10, ten years with him watching other women if I want. But what's that going to do to my self-esteem? But what is the problem anyway? My self-esteem is already attracting it, so therefore I need to go into that emotion. And that's the main difference between natural love way of dealing with it and divine love way of dealing with it. If I dealt with it in a purely natural love way, I would leave the relationship and just find someone, another relationship keep going with my life. But unless I look at the causal emotion that's in me that has caused that attraction, I can stay in a relationship where I can leave. That's the way I'm going to learn the lesson of love. That is, yeah. Yeah. It's more about how I care about how I treat myself. So remember, we, all of my comments about leaving a person are qualified by this particular statement, and that is, deal with your emotion first, then work out what you're going to do. Right. And then you won't even have to work it out. No, you'll know naturally, and the law of attraction will bring it naturally, actually. Right. Yeah, it did. Right. Yeah. So, so the key thing is to, with all of these lessons, is to realise that I have a choice of dealing with them intellectually or emotionally. If I deal with it intellectually, I can leave the relationship, leave the situation, but in the end, is that going to help at all? I'm just going to get it again. My law of attraction is that I've still got the emotion inside of me, and if I've got the emotion inside of me, why are things going on for If I've got the emotion inside of me, what's going to happen? Because it's just going to continue to occur. So what I need to do is deal with the emotion first, release the emotion. Once the emotion is released, now if I'm still getting the same thing, but my law of attraction has changed, I know that I've changed, but the person themselves does not want to deal with that emotion, now I have a decision about love of self to make. Is it loving for me to stay in a relationship with somebody who treats me unlovingly? No. Obviously not. And if I've dealt with the emotions of love of self, and I feel really quite good about myself now, and they still want to treat me that way, what will I do? I will leave, even if it's temporarily, let them work through their stuff, and who knows, I might go back to them at some stage in the future after they have. Or I might leave for good. I care about how others treat me. So this means I address issues when other people treat me to smile and to love. I do not allow myself to treat myself unlovingly for the sake of another person. And the key point, if I sacrifice my own happiness for myself to love another, then I'm not loving myself or the other. So can you see those points there? What's going on there with the lesson of love? It's very subtle though. It's not a lot like a lot of times it's guilt within the, the context of a family that causes us to actually do things that are not loving to ourselves. It's, but it's often hard to identify that the person is not treating you lovingly. Yeah. And often it's our addictions that cause us to get caught into these situations. So for example, Let's say I've got a family member who's angry with me and they have the expectation that they can yell at me at any time they want and treat me bad at any time they want. And because I feel that I need to be loving and also I might have guilt that I might have done something in the past that's attracted this anger. So for example, let's say I'm a woman who has cheated on my husband in the past, three years ago. 
And I work through all of these feelings of repentance and remorse, and I feel really, really sorry for all my actions, and I've worked through the cause of emotion that caused me to actually do that, but my husband won't forgive me. And so any situation that comes up, even just like a basic situation, I didn't get the right food today, and he's angry with me. What's that telling me? He's not dealt with his cause of emotion, and he's willing to reject at me anger, and I'll probably be willing to stay in that situation because of my own guilt. Is that loving to myself? No. But I'll feel like I want to stay there because of the guilt, right? The guilt will drive me. I'll feel like, I, you know, and I've got some really, I should have printed out some stuff on the internet that I've brought with me, some personal experiences from different people that I've found about all of these kinds of subjects. Very powerful experiences which I'll read to you at one point. So the key thing is with this issue, if you don't love yourself, then you cannot love the other. You're not being loving to the other if you're sacrificing yourself. You understand what I mean by that? So even if you're even if you're just not speaking the truth, but like how many of you in your relationships right now haven't said the truth about how you feel about something right today or last night or yesterday? Right? Why didn't I say the truth? Because I was afraid. Is it fear love? No. So what do I need to start doing? Say the truth. Let the chips fall where they may be and see where it takes me. But let the development in love continue. Now, I had another issue there. Oh, yeah, when others use guilt to manipulate us. If a person is using a guilt trip to get you to do what they want, how many of you feel that? Has happened in your life, just about everybody will be thought. If a person is trying to use guilt to get you what you want, get what they want out of you, obviously you have guilt within you. So that's your law of attraction. You need to work your way through that emotionally. But if you allow their guilt to manipulate you, you are not treating yourself lovingly. Now you can stop that intellectually, or you can stop that by dealing with the cause of emotion. You can do it either way. What about? daughter whose mother gets cancer and she decides she's going to care for her mother but actually in order to do that she sacrifices a lot of her personal happiness and she she uh, her personal health uh, worsens she's not sleeping she's spending all of her time with her mother and, and the children being neglected yeah. perhaps a bit yeah. emotionally because that's for us to care for another person when in reality we're not caring for ourselves? A really challenging thing for me to confront was a belief that I had that love and relationships are about sacrifice for one another. Actually, it's not a truth at all. But what is the orthodox religious, orthodox? All orthodox religion says, yeah, just sacrifice for each other. Compromise. Jesus sacrificed for you, so you're going to sacrifice for each other. And that's it. <laughs> it sounds really basic, a lot of this stuff, but when I really looked at my life, really under the microscope, there's a lot. Of, there was a lot of ways that I was sacrificing myself in order to love other people. So you can even do it with, uh, say, with your friends, right? Your friends, you know your friend feels something and they have a desire for something. When you're with that friend, do you still let yourself have your own desires? Or do you find yourself all the time doing what your friend desires? So that's not loving you. So we get that lesson, do we? Go into that firstly emotionally like you do and let yourself grieve the fact that you do not know what love of service is. 
because there is actually lots of causal emotion in there about, and, and I've had to deal with many of these kind of emotions of self shame, guilt, and all of these kind of things inside of yourself that cause you to look at yourself in a way that God is not looking at you. So God looks at us all the same way. From God's perspective, we are all the best He created from His perspective. And in the in the prayer that many of you got handed out, that uh, Peter and Claire so kindly covered with plastic, what do you call that process? <laughs> Laminated. And in that prayer, it's one of the things I mentioned to people in the first century all the time, is that you are the pinnacle of God's creation. But most of us don't believe that inside of ourselves. But that doesn't mean I'm the pinnacle and you're not. We are all the pinnacle of God's creation. So I don't feel, and you wouldn't feel if you were the pinnacle of God's creation, you wouldn't feel either that we're one's lesser than the other. But if I feel I am lesser than others, often I'll be driven by conduct, which is the opposite of addiction. And what I mean by that is, I'll often be driven to make others lesser than me. Driven to pull down people. Driven to get people to do what I want them to do. Because I actually feel I'm lesser than them, and it creates often the opposite desire within us to satisfy that addiction. So we need to look at all of those things. All of those things, are they loving? Can you see there's a lot involved in love, isn't there? When you think about it. Yeah. And these are all feelings, remember. Love's a feeling. So I can't say, oh yeah, I care about how others treat me, but not feel it in my heart. It's the feeling towards myself. You will get to a stage towards yourself that you love yourself so much, you would never even be able to let another person, and in fact, Another person won't even be able to let themselves treat you badly. Uh, you'll get to that stage. Now, I'm not saying that that doesn't mean there'll be a group of people who will be unloving in your life. Because you may choose to interact in that state with unloving people in order to help them. Does that make sense? But that'll be your choice. You may also choose to not react, interact with any of those people and your law of attraction will be perfect. You'll have just a nice, loving life with everything nice happening to you. Now in the first century I chose to do the opposite. I chose to live in the world but not the other. And that's what I'm suggesting to yourself too. Live in this world so you can change this world as well as yourself. But don't be opposite. Don't have the same view of love that this world has. Don't have the same view of truth that this world has because they are highly distorted. Right, what's next now? I don't care about how Yeah, so I care about how I treat myself. How many of you think you care about how you treat yourself? Uh, you really care about how you treat yourself? Right? How many of you smoke? Be honest. It's alright. There's no and any of you are judging by the way. Stop the judging. <laughs> so there's a few of us that smoke. That is driven by an emotion of not not loving yourself. How many of you drink? That's driven by an emotion of not loving yourself too. How many of you need to excess? That's driven by an emotion of not loving yourself. You see what's going on in our lives? Now, notice that some of us have a disapproving emotion to one of those things, but we're okay with eating to excess. Right? Can you see how we even have judgment about which one's worse than the other? Can you see that? But in reality, they are all as bad as each other because they are all a reflection of me not loving myself. So, look at how you love yourself. On a physical level, on an emotional level, and at a soul level. On a physical, spiritual and soul level, look at how you love yourself. What would love it myself do? Would it ever bring harm to myself? Natural love way and divine love way, what's your suggestion? On the natural love way, what would I do if I'm dealing with that situation? Let's say I'm eating to excess. On a natural love way, I'll just stop doing that. I'll go on a diet. How many of you have been on diets? <laughs> Being honest girls, in particular, men too. But majority of our audience on diets at some point. 
<laughs> yeah, go and fix it. So, so that's a natural love way. Go on a diet, fix the problem. But what's the problem? Every problem is emotional. Now, if I'm not addressing the emotion, then sure, I can fix the, fix the problem, and I can go out working out, and I can you know eat the right foods and become nice and slim and taut and terrific, and you know look 20 years younger and all that stuff. But at the end of the day, if I'm not dealing with the emotion, is the causal emotion resolved? So what am I going to do without addiction to food? I'm probably just going to channel it to an addiction to something else because I haven't actually resolved the emotion as to why I did that. Often it's a combination of those things that happen though. Often, you know, even if on the natural love path we may stop and we may go on a diet and in the process of going on a diet learn to love myself a bit more emotionally. Does that make sense? And that's why things can change using the natural love path. But the divine love path, which would be look at the causal emotion of why I overeat and just go straight into that emotion. You can do with that in a day or two. Like I've had a, a one fellow who was smoking, he dealt with that in about an hour and a half. He cried for an hour and a half about what he was doing to himself and he could not smoke anymore. And he's never smoked since. Now all he did was, was cry about the causal emotion, which was to do with his mother. Resistive? In what way do you mean? Okay. Okay. If you want, if you, is there a dust? If you, if you think you want to do something and nothing's changing, even if you're crying, then it means you don't want to do it. Well, it means you don't want to do it. You need to live in not wanting to do it. Um, do you follow what I mean by that? So let's say, um, I'll give you an example. You want to use your example? Your dad stuff? Yeah. Okay. All right. So Gloria's emotions are, um, she has cancer that began in your right breast. And the cancer is eating away of her, obviously, like cancer does, right? So there's an emotion that's driven that. Now, obviously Gloria's cried and cried and cried and done a lot of processing about having the cancer, haven't you? And you've done a lot of processing about how men have treated you in your life and all of those things, but the cancer isn't changing. Oh yeah, it is now since I've been Okay, so it's starting to change a bit, but still not healed. Not completely. Okay. So, but it has started changing. Okay. So it means you are already starting to do the causal emotion, doesn't it? Okay. So, so the process before then was there was lots of resistance to dealing with some of those causal emotions. One of the causal emotions was fear, wasn't it? You had, you had a fear. Another causal emotion was, and this is a part that is still needing to be dealt with, with men. Hold on. I stayed with it. I thought, shit, I don't want to deal with it. I want to stay angry. Exactly. You want to, there's an emotion in you that's creating the cancer towards men that you want to stay angry with men rather than actually release the grief you feel towards men. Right? So, it's an, it's a, how many of you ladies feel that if you forgive a man, he's gotten away with it? How many of you feel that? Quite a few of you. So, and if you have this emotion that you that you hold, and we'll have a whole discussion again about anger later. But if you have a discussion where you're angry with you're, you're angry with men, and you want to hold on to it, then you're not being truthful when you're saying you want to heal it. You are better off being truthful, saying, "And this is what you've been doing, starting to do lately, is you're starting to recognise." I'm angry with men, and I want to be. Like I'm sick of what men have done, and I'm, you know what I mean. And, and allow yourself to get into the truth of the emotion, right? And then ask yourself, do I, 
want to keep doing it this way, or am I, when am I going to be ready to forgive? When, I go, when, I'm going, when am I going to be ready to grieve? Because it's the grieving emotion that needs to be released. So most of the time cancers are caused by holding on to grief which, and, and suppressing grief with anger, and then even suppressing anger in many cases. So one of the emotions that Gloria has towards men is she wants attention from a man. She wants a man to care for her, right? Now, can you get a man to care for you when you're angry with him all the time? No? You can't, can you? So what are you going to do with your anger if you want a man to care for you? You'll shut it down, make out it doesn't there, not there. You know what I mean? You keep it all under control, won't you? Because you want the caring emotion from a man. But the reality is the anger with men is an underlying emotion still there. And it's to do with you desiring the other person, and men in general, to pay for what they've done. And this is a common women emotion that is a multi-generational woman emotion. Almost all women on the planet have this emotion of wanting men to pay for what they've done. And holding on to the anger in order to make them be punished for what they've done. Right? This desire to punish. Now that desire to punish is going to create cancer within you, your own body. So the key is to look even more in that. A few weeks ago you had a dream. It was a dream where you, you woke up from feeling really, really distressed. Right? And you remember it was about men and you projecting at them emotions of what of of uh, harm till they die. Do you remember that dream? You can't remember that. That dream was pointing you in the right direction. The dream was telling you right, that that actually your projections at men are actually sucking men dry around you. Do you understand? Now I'm not saying this to harm you or hurt you. I'm just saying the anger with men is, I want this from you. I, and the, the projection is, I want you to look out. I want your support. I want your love. And in the process of that, you're getting quite angry. You have been quite angry with men. And you want to hold on to that anger. In reality, you just need to release the anger and the grief, the desire that men give you attention. And you know it's all related to your dad, where he didn't give you the attention that you need. Well, um, there is still within you the desire to punish men as a result, if that makes sense. But the truth is you have dealt with some of this emotion, otherwise your cancer would not be getting better. So you're being too hard on yourself as well, which is a common problem you have. Does everyone think this is all a bit too basic? No. So man, that's Mary's emotion. So tell me about your emotion. <laughs> The emotion that you think that love is basic and it's, and it's not. But the common emotion Mary has is there's, there's a lot of things happening within Mary's soul where she just gets everything so rapidly. And it's because she's going through this process of remembering. But she doesn't want to admit to herself that it's a process of remembering. What she wants to think instead is that all of these things everyone must already know. Does that make sense? If that's more preferable to her, believe that. Sorry, I can't hear you. Okay. Um, Mary said earlier that there's a subtlety to what you're saying, even though at times I've already heard this. Yeah. Subtlety is my mommy. Okay, that's good. Yeah. What I'm experiencing is, I don't know whether this is spirit, so I'm assuming it is the past. And sometimes I'm afraid of that. It's like the hell's coming to fight against my You know, it's like those spirits are there with me, and it's scary. But I'm yeah, let, let's deal with that issue while we're dealing with it. But I just want to say something that I'm asking very much for my journey of God to Yeah, that's good. What you need to do is ask for God's protection firstly. 
to, be, to protect you from spirits who are going to be attracted to you while you're dealing with negative emotions. So you can actually ask God for that protection and receive that. Secondly, understand that those spirits are attracted to you because of the law of attraction intensifying your emotion. If you choose to just experience the emotion, you will not be damaged by that. But if you choose to live in the emotion, now do you understand the difference between living in it and experiencing it? Like, for example, anger is what? The suppression of grief. Right, so, so if I suppress grief, I'm going to be angry. If I'm in an angry state and I stay in that state, what kind of spirits are going to be attracted to me? Angry, angry spirits who can manipulate my anger into harming. If I'm angry with men, they'll want me to harm men through... That they'll use me to harm me. Does that make sense? Now, what's, what's causing that? My desire to stay in my anger. Most of the time we desire to stay in the anger because it's powerful, it's flaming, we feel good when we're in anger, we feel like we're not letting people get away with what they've done, and we've got a lot of these kind of blocking type of emotions, right? We need to let ourselves feel them and get into this grief. When, sorry, I just want to continue. If you get into the grief, the angry spirits will just go, oh, all of this manipulative thing that they can do with you has just stopped. They will leave you, and you know who you attract now? A group of ladies in the spirit world who are in grief with their men. And that will intensify your emotion and help you get into your emotion. Experience your grief. Now, if you try to shut down your grief, you will go back into anger again, probably. And that will then attract the angry spirits back again because they can now use that. Can you see what's happening? The key is for you to experience the causal emotion. And if you choose to do that, everything will be fine. It's when you don't choose to do that that everything starts unraveling. Hey, Jason, I just wanted to clarify. I'm living in this space of anger, which I would rely on my mind. Yep. And my, I'm thinking now, and my mind. And we might mind. just need to give you the mic, because I can't. Yeah. So I've been here, I'm going to just shout. I'm living in that space of anger and turn on the mind. Um, and it's only just come up for me to the extent that I hate myself. So, and I've hated myself all my life because my law of attraction has attracted men, you know, I, mean, I won't bore you. They treat you bad. Yeah, and at some point though, I just think I give up and be Canadian, so thank you. Um, <laughs> um, because it gave me a lot of understanding about a lot of things, and yeah. especially spirit, because I tend to, because of my upbringing, I tend to split off, separate, and I lived in spirit a lot more, but I was also terrified of what I was experiencing. So I'm just allowing it to occur now, but, you know, my mother left when I was a couple of months old, and then I didn't know her. So I have I've kind of gone in there as much as I possibly can to sense that, and I believe like she's in the second or third speed, but it's not nice, it's just not nice. So I, I'm not sure how to deal with that totally, I'm just kind of in there at the moment, and all I can do is ask the boss protection. Yeah, one of, one of the reasons why you feel so bad about yourself is because your mother left you and you have so much, you feel that you would have blamed for that. Yeah. Yeah. And that, you, now you need to go and feel that. That emotion that I just I can't even do that, but I just like, feel feeling like I'm just moving across to me. But you, you are if you let, yeah, you need to experience it. That's it. What, what's happening a lot of times is we get into a core emotion where we start feeling it. But then we shut it down. An emotion like that may take two or three weeks of really solid crying to actually release. Do you follow me? Once it's released, the law of attraction will change so rapidly after that, and you'll know that it's been released. Right? But a lot of that emotions also have facets to them. So an event might be, event, my mother died. The facets to it, she left me. You know, there's a lot of other, I'm abandoned. You know, there's a lot of facets that we feel as a child. They might not be true from the mother's perspective, you know. And one of the emotions Mary's had with me is that I, I chose to abandon her. Now, the, the actual events didn't occur that way, but, but the feeling is there. Does that make sense? 
feel the feeling. It's okay to feel that feeling, connect with those feelings, connect with it at a causal level. And you'll find it has lots of facets. Like men are going to abandon me now. So my abandoning Mary causes it, may also cause her to feel how men will abandon her. It may also cause her to feel like she needs to um, have some kind of um, connection with men that allows her to control the connection. So there might be lots of different emotions in, in that in that one in that one event. So allow yourself to experience it. A lot of times, what we do is we say, "Oh, but I felt that." But if my law of attraction hasn't changed, then I'm not feeling the causal emotion in that. I'm just feeling effects. Laura. The other one is fear of spirits. Fear of the angry spirits. Fear of ugly um, faces. <coughs> So what Gloria is saying is that fear of spirits or fear of the ugly spirits, she's seeing them in her, in her face and they're so distressing that it causes her to get out, it gets into fear, right, and gets her out of her emotional processing. The truth is that no matter how ugly a person is in the spirit world, they can't harm you. And you're not accepting that truth in the emotional you're not trusting God yet emotionally. Does that make sense? Now there's an emotion preventing you from trusting God and that is you believe that when you see an ugly form that they can actually harm you. And it's a false belief. God is much more powerful and love is much more powerful than these spirits. But you don't believe that to be true yet. Yeah? To, to do that you've got to allow yourself to feel the fear when you're in those spirits' presence. And then pray to God to actually experience the truth so that you can look upon these spirits with love rather than with fear. When that happens, you won't be afraid of whatever spirits are attracted to you. So I've had people say to me, oh, at the moment you've got this really ugly spirit connected to you. And I'm saying, yeah, okay. Like, <laughs> yeah, I can feel that. And why is it connected to me? They're worried that there's an ugly spirit connected to me. I'm not worried about that. I'm worried about why he's connected to me. What emotion am I dealing with that's resonant with this? So recently, about I don't know, eight weeks ago, there was a spirit connected with me who had this deep grief about feeling that no matter what he did, he was going to be destroyed anyway. And that's an emotion that was in me. So that emotion in me attracted that spirit, and that spirit was going to be with me now until I dealt with that emotion. Now I know he's left me now, but it took dealing with that emotion. So I just see that all these spirit connections as things that can help you. So if an ugly spirit is coming to you, he's helping you deal with this fear. Right? So get into the fear, talk to God about the fear, release the fear, which will mean being terrified probably for a period of time. Release the fear and accept the truth. This spirit can't help you, hurt you at all. Well, the movies they show you with the ghosts that come causing fires and stuff like that. Yeah. Well, the truth is that spirits can cause all those things, but only if your law of attraction. <laughs> Do you see what I'm saying? It's always based on the law of attraction. Remember, that's what I talked about two weeks ago. Everything is based on the law of attraction. Um, I care about how I treat others is the next lesson. This is Mary's favourite subject, actually. <laughs> In One concern that we've often had over the last year, myself and Mary, has been that on the divine path, people seem to get on the path start dealing with their emotions and then think that they can treat other people badly. Because it's your law of attraction. Because it's your law of attraction. Right? In other words, by badly, I'm saying, look, how many of you have been angry with me? Oh, Quite a yeah. lot, right? A lot more than probably angry. Yeah. Lots of people have been angry with me. Is that loving? No matter what I've done, is it loving? It's not loving. No, it's not loving. <laughs> <laughs> it's not loving to be angry at another person. How many of you have been angry at another person last week? A 
See the justification? No, no. That's the justification? It's honours to me. No, 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 you're not asking a question. The question wasn't honest. But isn't it hard by being honest? That would have been a question. It's what you said, but it's honest, isn't it? You're making a statement where you justify the fact that you can be angry. And you believe you can justify that. And it's okay, Jim. Like, you can believe that. It's okay. I'm not condemning you or anything like that. But the truth is, the majority of us believe that we are justified being angry with someone who has, quotation marks, hurt us. Don't we? Don't you feel that? And when I say it, it's not loving to be angry at someone else, it's not a judgment, it's just the truth. Like, I've been angry at people. I was probably angry at AJ last week, but it wasn't loving him when I did it. And unless I'm honest with myself about that, how can I properly assess my own development in love? How can I feel that I'm a, a loving person in that moment? Yeah. Does that mean that you don't love him at all? No. no. It means in that instance, you are not loving. Only in that instance. Yep. You told me that I wasn't angry at you, but I didn't know that I was being angry at you. It's okay that you don't know. Like, many of you have been angry at not knowing. Like, that's what they call depression in most cases, right? For a complete suppression of emotion is anger suppressed to the point where you don't even know you're angry anymore. Right? How many of you have been depressed in your life? Suppression of anger. Right? So oftentimes what happens is we have a layer on top of the anger called depression, and that layer on top of the anger is actually suppressing the anger. I'm not suggesting to suppress the anger. What I'm saying is if you are angry, and I'm not just saying if you're yelling at somebody, I'm not saying, I'm saying if you feel anger towards another person, you are at that moment being unloving. You are breaking the law of love. Lesson number five of the wisdom. You're breaking that law of love, which is not being loving to others. The reason why is when you're in anger, you are not owning your own emotions. And if you're choosing to not own your own emotion, you're going to be damaging everyone around you with it. Right. So, I'm not saying close down your anger. I haven't said that to you at all. What I'm saying is, when I'm angry, I am not loving. And in fact, the divine love way to deal with it is to acknowledge I'm angry, pray to God about why am I angry, what is the emotion underneath that I don't want to feel, and to actually go into that emotion. Yeah. Because if we if we develop shame about our anger, which I've had a lot of shame about my anger, we actually shut down the whole process because we're just going to guilt, which is an excuse not to actually deal with that underlying emotion just as much as the anger is. Makes sense to everyone. What Karen yeah. said. different states in us. The first state is not feeling at all. The causal emotion. Right? Or the effect emotion. Now, anger is an effect emotion. What I mean by that is that anger caps another emotion. It's over the top of another emotion. It suppresses the emotions of grief. You follow me? Anger is a powerful way for you to take control of your life so that you don't have to feel grief. That's anger is the effect emotion. The causal emotion is the grief itself. Do you follow me? Now, 
if I don't feel the causal or the effect emotion, I am in a state of total shutdown. In that state, I am projecting to my, to my world, the universe, the emotions that are within me to the maximum amount. So that is actually the worst state to be in from God's perspective. Now, the next state usually that we get triggered into is the effect emotion. So in other words, my anger gets triggered. Do you follow me? Now, if I'm feeling my anger emotion, I'm in a better state than that. But I'm still not being loving. Do you follow? So I'm not saying don't do that. And I'm not saying you'd be able to jump down to being loving, which is down here. I'm saying you have to travel through this. But when you're feeling the effect emotion, you are better off doing that than doing that. But you are still not being loved. The third thing would be to do would be to step into the cause. Now, once I stepped into the cause, now I'm starting to be really loving, but I'm still not loving because this cause is in me. This grief is in me and it needs to be released. Once I've released the grief, the cause, now I am loved on that issue. You follow me? Now that is the state where I'm not projecting anything to the universe around me, except love. This state I'm still projecting, this state I'm still projecting, this state I'm projecting the most amount. We need to understand that as we step down through the emotions, we are actually getting to a better condition, not a worse condition. However, if I stay there, then I am not helping myself. The whole object is to get to the cause of emotion. So, when you're in a state of anger, look at the fact that you are still not allowing yourself to feel the cause. You don't want to feel the cause. Anger, an effect emotion, is there so that you don't feel the cause. And the essence of the lesson in love is to say, I care about how I treat others, therefore if I'm angry, I'm into, I need to go into this process. So it's not to judge the anger at all, it's just to say, if because of this lesson in love and because I want to be perfected in love, this is an indication to me that I can step underneath this. It's a guidance system to lead you home. It's a guidance system to lead you home, and that's why I've, the, the talk I'm going to be giving is called Anger is Your Guide. Anger is a guidance system to lead you to causal emotion, that leads you home. Um, is grief always the causal emotion? Not always, no. Um, a causal emotion, like anger is a choice to feel powerful. The cause might be you don't want to feel powerless. Right? Or, or there might be other emotions. Anger is also used to control people. The cause might be, I feel uncontrollable, or I feel out of control, or I feel like nobody, I have no control. Anger is also an emotion that is driven, we'll talk about anger in lots of different ways, but anger is an emotion that is caused by my having expectations of others that are unloving. Right? And so the expectation, like just my expectation for you to listen to me without, yet, without being noisy is an unloving expectation. Do you follow me? So I'm not dealing with the cause if I get angry about that. The other week, you don't mind if I bring this up, Peter. The other week, remember, Peter got upset about the parking upstairs, right? He was in the effect emotion, which was great, because he was out of that emotion. Right? He was in the effect emotion, but still not in the cause, which was people are treating me unlovingly. Right? And I don't want them to treat me unlovingly, or each other unlovingly. I want them to learn these lessons of love. But in that instant, he was not being loving himself. So he was not learning the lesson that he himself was hoping everyone else was learning in that instant, if that makes sense. So you can see there are many, many different causes for anger. Many causes. And we'll discuss them all in another discussion. So if any of you have any more questions about anger, it's going to be in another discussion. <coughs> any questions about other things other than anger? Dennis? Just, just as a point for Adisha, uh, should we all start parking? <laughs> no, that would be unloving. <laughs> you don't purposefully trigger people when you're loving. Do you follow me? You don't purposefully try to make their life harder if you're loving. Right? 
Oh, it may, it may do, but let another law of attraction event happen, not you being unloving because you're damaging yourself doing that. So, can you see, I've had people tell me, oh, you needed me in your life because I, you needed somebody to treat you badly. Oh, okay, yeah, sure, I did, obviously. But why do you decide to be unloving? Get to that. Um, Um, I'm sure I'm here. Um, all this week I've been having all this stuff coming up and I've had many things I wanted to go and talk to you about today. And then I found out that it's not to be so I got angry with you. I got frustrated because I just felt stuck with this. But anyway, yesterday morning, my little girl Diana, she woke up crying and she never cries. And she had a she had a sore and swollen toe. And so I bathed her and then put a good boy. Anyway, I'll her. her. But then that sore toe became into she started vomiting. And then the vomiting was a really bad pain in the neck here, on the bone. And headache, and, and she was crying, and then she started saying, you know, um, it's, it's her fault she was sick because the day that her dad and I were separated, she was sick. And I said it wasn't. And then later on, she said, well, if you believe Dad loved you, he wouldn't have it. And at one point, when she was sick all day yesterday and last night, and still this morning vomiting, I, I, I went right into it and felt it, and the crying just drove me crazy. I, the crying was just really affecting me. Um, but I felt good because she was getting all this out, because she doesn't cry. But I kept wanting to say to myself, um, um, what she was going through, what am, am I not feeling? And and I kept sitting with her and being with her and lying with it, breathing on the floor and and nothing kept coming up still. I, I just feel just stuck. I don't know whether whether, you know, like she got sick, well did she just just get the virus, just get sick? Um, no, she didn't. Um, and so I, I was yeah, I, I and I can't explain it for her either. She said, did you give me this? Did Dad give me this? Or did I just get it from somebody? And, and where is it their sickness? Or they've just got a, a, a war? Or is it really you? Because I really wanted to take it from her yesterday. Well, and, well and I'll answer all of those up. questions in a few weeks' time when I talk about parenting children. Because uh, there's a whole discussion on itself. The short answer is, yes, it was caused by your emotions that you were suppressing. It began with the suppression of your anger towards me, and you needed to allow yourself to look at some of the emotions. One of a, a, a quite large emotion is and many of you have this. AJ's talking about all this stuff, it really resonates with my soul, but I need personal help to deal with it. So many of you have come up and said to me, When are you going to give me personal help? Now, now I want to get this message out to six billion people. That's about how many people there are here. And then another about 12 or so in the hells of the first fear. Do you reckon I'm going to be able to help them all myself? <laughs> no. Right? So the truth is that I don't have the capacity to be able to help all of you individually. You all have the capacity to help yourself. With all of the stuff I've been teaching, you certainly have the capacity to help yourself. I have not received help myself from any single person on this path. You do not need help from any single person on this path. All you need to do is practice the path. Um, oh, of course, that's what I'm always talking about. Like, does a, does a child experience this emotion by going to a kinesiologist? Does a child experience this emotion by going to a body therapist, by going to a massage therapist? What does a child, as a child, experience this emotion? It's experiencing this emotion because, at the end of the day, it chooses to experience this emotion without any judgment. So if I'm not experiencing an emotion, it's totally because of my judgment. Now, a body therapist, a massage therapist, and all these other ones can help you. Get the help if you feel it's going to help you. But at the end of the day, understand that every single emotion within you that's not being dealt with is because of a personal feeling within yourself that you do not want to deal with it. 
Now, you can trigger, get triggered people to trigger you, pressure point you, do all of these other things, but at the end of the day, if you're not feeling it, just admit the truth. My law of attraction is telling me, remember a few weeks ago I was saying, my law of attraction is telling me, I do not want to. Remember, who came up and said to, to me about soulmate? She wanted my her soulmate. Who was that? She's not here today. Who is it? Nina. Nina, that's right. Nina came up and said, um, I want my soulmate to be with me. And I said, do you really want your soulmate to be with you? And by then she had learned the lesson from all the other people who had come up. <laughs> and she said, I must not want my soulmate to be with you. <laughs> and, and the truth is, she didn't want her soulmate to be with her because of all of the anger emotions she has towards men, the feelings that she has about men and so forth that are not filled within her, right? So the truth is that if I'm not feeling an emotion right now, I do not want to. And you can tell yourself as much as you want that you do want it. If you're not feeling it right now, you do not want it. So be honest. Remember, it's about honesty with God. Be honest. I don't want to feel rage. I don't want to feel anger. I don't want to feel sadness. I don't want to feel grief. Talk about these issues with God. Why you don't want to feel them. Do you follow me? Because if we're not feeling them, we don't want to. It's really that simple. And down the front. Uh, when you say about not wanting to feel it, uh, is the difference between not wanting to feel it and suppressing it uh, to do with your desire? So your desire is not wanting to feel it in comparison to just suppressing it because it's... Suppression is a desire to not feel. So you are not wanting to feel something. So, for instance, depression is the result of suppression of anger. So depression is the result of you not wanting to feel anger. What's anger? That's the result of usually you not wanting to feel grief. You can see how all of these feelings are layered, but they're all usually the result of us not wanting to feel something. My, what's another reason why I might not want to feel anger? Because I feel judgment. Like, how, how many of you feel that in, in, in your previous experience with spirituality of any kind, that somebody would have let you be angry? Well, you know? And ironically, the Bible does actually say, be angry and yet do not sin. In other words, the Bible is implying that you're allowed to be angry, and in fact, you are sinning less if you're angry than if you're not. Right? But you don't have to be unloving with it, and why unloving with it is, I don't have to, if I'm angry with Mary, I don't have to go to Mary and yell and scream and swear and everything at her. I can choose to own my anger, get really frustrated and angry, even if she's there, right? But connect with what's underneath. Allow myself to go through that process and connect with what's underneath. Do you follow me? Now, none of us are going to be perfect at it because until these emotions are gone within us, we're just not going to be perfect at it. But understand that every time I'm angry like that, every time I project it at somebody, I am now out of harmony with love. Look at that. Every time you're out of harmony with love, look at it. Allow yourself to see yourself in the mirror. Let yourself see. Do you follow me with that? Okay. So does everyone understand that each state is actually a better state than the one above it? It's important to understand that. So it's far better for you to acknowledge a murderous feeling within you than that it is to totally suppress that murderous feeling. It's far better for you then to go underneath the murderous feeling and acknowledge even what the feeling is underneath that murderous feeling. And that you don't want to feel it. And then it's even better again to feel it, to choose to feel it. And each time you drop down into that emotionally, you are getting better and you are also becoming more developed in love every time you do that. So you are being more loving to yourself and others here, just feeling the anger, than you are suppressing everything. silly to be right in my some of my processing and my self and my self shame and myself uh, my angry with myself emotions I've actually hit myself with my fist 
right, until I've nearly passed out. So I've done <laughs> some very damaging things to myself. Do you follow me? I found recently that people have their faces and making like primal sound. Yeah. It's releasing. I found it's releasing. I didn't understand what it was about. Because that's what you would do if you were a child. Mm. A lot of times in those situations. Yeah. Uh, apparently. Um, <laughs> I'd just like to know, I haven't been before and you've probably discussed it before, but um, how do you know what the cause of the emotion is and how do you get there? Is it a step-by-step -step process exactly that? Yeah, you don't need to know what the cause of it is. What you need to do is firstly experience the emotion that you're having right now through the trigger straight away. So I've done a whole section on emotional clearing that you might want to grab. I think there's a few copies of that around. And, and, and just have a look at the, you, you will step down into the cause. Oftentimes we won't know the cause until even after we've felt the emotion of the cause. So the cause, underneath the cause is generally an event. Right? And, and a lot of times they are events even that we're not even conscious of because they were so young that we didn't even have a formulated intellect by when they occurred. So the key is to step down into the emotion. So if you have a trigger, the trigger might be somebody treats you badly right now. You go into that trigger. If you're angry, feel the anger, but no, I'm not getting to the bottom. I'm not getting to the bottom. What's underneath this anger? Go deeper again. Feel the anger, feel the anger. Let yourself experience the anger and really experience it, not dumping it on the person. But go out, bash a bag, whatever, yell, scream, let yourself connect. But understand that you can do that for a week and still not get to the cause. You need to choose to get the cause. The anger is your choice to avoid it. So go out of the choice to avoid it, you know, feel the anger, but understand you can make a different choice and you can now make a choice to experience what's underneath. And it's going to be an opening process. It's going to be a gradual process of opening initially. Nobody goes from closed down to open within one moment. It's a very rare thing for somebody to do. I've seen this. Like, the way you process, Jen, is really, really good. Because you go straight into the emotion, you're straight in it, and straight into the feeling of it. It's really lovely. Sorry? Yes. Yeah. Can I just share something? Yeah. Um, I telling me that actually I was the one that was blind. It's very interesting and you see this happening all the time. You know. I was just wondering what's actually happening when your lady before 
said that you know you can get these states where you're doing you know brief faces and you're still in the mirror. But what's happening when you get stuck in that for like hours, but you're not bubbling up anything, you're just like on the edge of this emotion that's like you just feel like you're on the edge of this brief and you can't actually have it. It's a, it's a fear-based emotion holding the full experience. So, so rather than trying to get into the grief, sit down with yourself with a pen and a piece of paper and start listing what you're afraid of about this grief. You follow me? Let yourself, let yourself know what you're afraid of. Because it's always generally your fears that cap the underlying emotion. If you're out of anger, usually it's your fear that's preventing emotion. If you're in anger, then you're even above the fear. Like usually it's Usually it's like the cause might be grief, above the grief might be fear of the grief, above the fear of the grief is the anger because that feels more powerful and so forth as you go up, right? So the key is to allow yourself to see your fears. Look at them, look at what those fears may be about this particular grief. So um, what, last, just give an example again in my own life last week. I had all of these emails, right? They were all telling me that I didn't know how to be Jesus. <laughs> and, that if I was Jesus, I, w I wouldn't be doing this and I wouldn't be doing that and I wouldn't be doing this and I wouldn't be experiencing my emotions like that and I wouldn't be having to say that I'm Jesus because, you know, in the first century I never said I was Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Which was interesting because I'd said it all the time. But on top of that, really they were referring to be about being the Messiah and I actually said that all the time as well. And then uh, they were saying too, these, uh, these uh, people were saying how um, if I was Jesus, I wouldn't have been anybody angry with me. In the first century, I didn't have anybody angry with me. Um, you know, and I would say, you know, there was all these comments, obviously not very wise comments, but all i got to do is just feel my emotions about this. So I go into my emotions about it. And I get down to a core emotion, and the core emotion was and myself and Mary were driving in the car from, from home to Brisbane and I start talking to her about my feelings about it. And the core emotion was this deep feeling of shame of myself not being what other people want me to be. And not even being, and then it got even deeper than that, and it was actually not being what I myself believed I should be. Right? Because, it, because I... I feel in a lot of ways like I've lost myself. That's how it felt. Um, so I've had all of these memories and experiences of my life, and then I and and now I'm not the person that I was then. I feel like damaged. Right? That damaged emotion. And then I went through even deeper than that. This really big feeling, and the feeling was that of deep sorrow that people have got to accept the person of me. Uh, in this path to abundant with God. I feel really sorry for you. Like that you've got to go through that. Because I just feel so, like, you know, sometimes I think, looking at myself, I think, would I accept me if I had to do that? You know? And the truth is that's the emotion I've had me go through. Um, but, so there was just this deep grief, and I just, I was driving along, and all of a sudden, there was there, and I just burst out crying, I cried for, well, I won't say how long. <laughs> For some time. And, uh, and just all this emotion of sadness came up in me that people, at some point, all the people who are angry with me and all the people who are upset with me will never become at one with God while they retain those emotions. And yet, I can fully see why they're angry with me and upset me. And so there was that feeling, that feeling of deep sorrow, that people need to come to accept something that is so hard for them to accept, and uh, they are finding at times difficult to go through. So that was the core emotion, and that was the emotion actually that was attracting these emails. You follow me? So they were thinking they were telling me off, telling me that I can't be Jesus because of this and can't be Jesus because of that and all these kind of things. And it was actually a beautiful law of attraction for me because it just got me into the real basic core emotion, which I'm still in actually, of feeling a deep shame with myself. And that's how the law of attraction works for you.
allow yourself to go through those emotional experiences. Yes? Um, what do you think it should be? I want to be like a wasp. <laughs> uh, no, 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 no. Yeah, I just... Like, one of the projections coming from these emails was that I should already be at one with God again. And if I'm not, then I must... I'm either not Jesus or I'm doing the wrong thing. Um, and and then one of the projections was, if I've got lots of people angry at me, then I must be doing the wrong thing. Right? And while I know that's not true, like that lots of people being angry at me doesn't mean I'm doing the wrong thing. Uh, because lots of people angry at me actually means they're being unloving. <laughs> um, there's that projection coming at me quite a lot, that, that I should not get anybody angry. If I was loving, no one would be angry with me. Of course it's not realistic. It's, it's quite a large error that we think actually, because to be loving is to tell the truth. Mm. If I care about how I, I treat others, I'll always tell the truth. Yeah. So my, my, my most loving action to anybody is to tell them the truth. If that truth triggers their emotion and they get angry with me, their anger is a reflection of their lack of love in their own soul. But that was projected at me. So they're, they're saying that other people are angry with me because because of all the nasty things I say. Uh, My feeling was that, like, this lifetime of your experience and everything that I am and more, I can just so relate to you and then it feels sort of so close. I mean, I've got fears of you, but I'm, you know, on some level. Yeah, thanks. Like, you kind of you know, understand this so well. Yeah. Because when you sit in the first century, you had no dysfunctional in us, you know, baggage. How does that fear that you could have no dysfunction, you have to go through that suffering? And then you still got your choices. Yeah. Yeah, and it's it's still something at the moment in my emotional condition I can't myself understand. I'm just I just have a memory of where I was. Um, and so it's very, very difficult for me to actually even explain to you why that was the case at the moment because of my own self-shame. But um, the 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 core emotions in me are still like this self shame and this, but I understand that you can relate to that. But, yeah, yeah, and and I sort of see this period of time for me as the uh, the teaching that's happening from my own perspective is that this period of time is a teaching time of helping you see that all the fourteen who have returned are exactly the same as you, and you. In the future, what will happen, many of them, and, and hopefully one of them will be me, uh, will become at one with God. And you'll see, <laughs> and you'll see the uh, transformation in them, right? And, and, and you'll feel they're very different. And you'll feel that they don't have injuries and you don't have errors anymore. You'll feel that. And then there'll be this temptation to think that, oh, they're unique. And this was something that was constantly projected at me in the first century. And I feel like this period of time is going to do a lot to undo. Because what you're seeing in front of your very eyes is the transformation of a person. And 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 so by my own life, I'm reflecting these truths through my own experience to you. So that you can have tr trust in your own experience. That you can actually allow yourself to experience the same things and go through the same transformation. So I, I felt that that was going to be a very powerful thing to do that. But I have lots of emotions in that process that I'm describing to you that you can connect with, so that's really good. But you'll get to a point where you, where many of you may feel like you can't connect with me anymore. Because uh, maybe, you know, maybe when I become a one with God, I don't have those emotions, and then how are you going to feel then? And hopefully the thing you remember then is, no, he had these emotions and they're gone, and this is the process that he did. And, and the process that others of the 14 have done as an example of the process that you can do. So that's the goal. But that's the greatest gift you can give us. To give us, to, to give us the role model of the teachings of God. Because I personally, I wouldn't know who he would Yeah. I mean, I could listen, but I, when I started, I was stuck. Yeah. So much in my intellect. 
Because we're listening through our filters all the time, too, aren't we? So it's very difficult. In our core solving issue. Yeah. So, and, that, and that's what I wanted to do, and that's the love of the, the 14 of return is all about that. It's all about just demonstrating that all this can be repaired. And that's a beautiful, like, that, that is a gift that I want to give. So, um, and that's, you know, I feel very passionate about that as well, and I have felt passionate about that. I think that, that what you're describing now, that process, has, has the greatest impact on me in what you've been demonstrating. And yeah. going back when you were going through, even before, you know, the whole journey of Mary coming onto the scene, it was um, kind of like this unfolding. And it's like for each of us, in everyday life, we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, what's mm -hmm. going to come up. And, um, and it's been watching this amazing unfolding that's been happening. And uh, it's been very inspirational for me, and and I can see by your demonstration how one needs to have the courage to, to look at this stuff and to, to jump off the cliff when yeah. it comes time to do that. That's it. So thank you. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. Um, well, this is uh, it's a, a five thirty, <laughs> so it's time to finish today. We'll do the other five lessons tomorrow. Also, uh, if any of you have further questions that you can think of coming up for Mary, perhaps you would like to, okay, you'd like to ask something tomorrow, Commissioner yeah. Mayfield, um, as well. And hopefully, oh sorry, but uh, there's a white Subaru uh, that left the, they left their keys in the door, and the young fellow broke down the outside. There's a white Subaru where the keys were left in the door, and the They're keys are now the outside on the chair. Those and over the next, I just want to say a few things about the next few weeks before you leave. And um, you've all got the email about what's planned. Uh, some sessions that I think will interest you greatly. One is the parenting children session, and I just wanted to mention a few things about the parenting children session. That, and also about these sessions. Please feel like you can bring your children along. Um, to all of these kind of sessions. I know some of you feel like they might get rowdy or whatever. That's fine. I don't mind if they come up and bother me. Well, even during the whole session, that's fine too. So bring your children along. But particularly think about bringing them along to that session because I want to confront you with their feelings about you. <laughs> if they're willing. So we'll see what happens there. Um, we also have a session coming up about sex and sexuality. And that's going to be quite a confronting session as well. It'll be, it'll be broken into two days. What I'm changing the format around a little so that um, I know many of you can't make both days on a weekend. So what I'm doing from now on probably is we'll be having a session where I speak on one day and then the next day is more question and answers about what we talked about. Does that make sense? So you might find that you, you can come to the question and answer session or, sorry, you can't come to this, the, uh, either of those sessions, but at least make one of those days. Um, how many of you find that it's a bit difficult with two days on the weekend? And quite a lot of you will have thought you find that quite difficult. So what I'm trying to do is just make it so that you can focus on one part of it, and then uh, the others will be taped, so you can actually hear the response of the people and talk to them if you want to as well. Um, but I hope some people will at least come to the question and answer session. <laughs> Otherwise there will be no question and answers. You know, if that's the case, I'll just go surfing when I'm in here. <laughs> um, the, uh, the other issue is that um, for, for many, I know that uh, there are times when many of you are feeling like you want personal assistance. And my suggestion to you is that you go to God about that. Because God can give you the personal assistance you want. But you're just not trusting that. And this is all about developing a relationship with God, not with me. So, so when you're in that dire straight place where you feel like you need help, really start talking to God about those times. At, at, at those times. Alright? Because that will help you so much. I found in those instances, when I've 
the dog sat there or laid there and asked for God's help with the intent, it has come like that. Usually within a second or two, like I've found. And phone calls, the law of attraction events all seem to happen straight away after that, Dennis. Yeah, I have. Uh, over the last couple of weeks, and I try to pray to God and I'll just keep doing it. So then I give him a mulligan and he went. He, he got angry with God. Yeah, that's <laughs> People don't know what a mulligan is. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So, so that's the thing is that oftentimes we're not reflecting our true emotions with God. And this is all about you reflecting how you really feel with God. So if you feel frustrated, talk to God about your frustration. If you feel angry, talk to God about your anger. If you feel upset, if you feel ignored, if you feel downtrodden, whatever they are, talk to God about all those issues. Feel them. Then you're starting to be truthful on this path. We, if you're, there's no such thing as stuck. Yes, it's how you're feeling, but there's no such thing. There's this choice. There's choice. I am choosing to avoid my emotion. Understand? Does everyone understand what I'm saying there? If you're not being helped in that instant, you do not want to get out of your denial. Be honest. You think you do, but you don't. Like, it's so important. Like, I've been in these states too, right? Where I've been in denial and I thought I wasn't and all that stuff. Like, I've been in these same states that you're in. Be honest. Start being really, really honest with yourself here. Like, if right at the instant you're asking for help, you're not getting it, then it means at the soul level there's something else going on that you need to face, not the thing you think. So let yourself... Just feel those things. Let yourself experience the emotion of frustration. Because many of you have the emotion of frustration on this path, right? But you don't let yourself feel it. So let yourself feel it. Get angry with God about it. Because you're frustrated with God. So be angry about that. But understand that that's the effect. And I need to step even deeper. But go with that. Many of us have a deep anger and frustration with God. And we need to let ourselves feel that anger and frustration and go deeper. Many of us are quite frustrated. How many of you feel quite frustrated? Uh, yes, there's quite a lot feeling quite frustrated. Express your frustrations to God now. Really express them. And then look at your law of attraction. Today, myself and Mary on the drive here had, had about 20 or 30 law of attraction events. Did we not? Right? that we could recognize, they were the ones we recognized. I don't know how many we missed. You know I mean? It's a three hour drive, we had 30, 20 or 30 of them. Right? Now, this will happen to you constantly when you want to deal. So if it's not happening to you constantly, ask yourself, do I really want this or am I afraid? What are my fears? What are, you know what I mean? Go into those things. Start being truthful. If you're afraid, be truthful about you being afraid. If you're angry, be truthful about you being angry. If you're frustrated, annoyed, upset, be truthful. How many of you feel like I should give you personal assistance? Well, feel that, because I'm not going to give you <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, let yourself feel these emotions that you're denying within yourself. Let yourself go into them. When you do, you will open. I guarantee you will open if you are truthful, really truthful. The truth will set you Anyway, that's a nice way I think to finish us off.